Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another competitively oriented Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video as I like inputting my theories and knowledge of the game out onto this sharing platform that is YouTube, as well as talking over discussion points with commenters that may have different views to my own. So, today I wanted to discuss the merits and viability of the true Draco deck without Masterpiece, the true Draco Slaying King, as I'm sure you are all aware by this point, but just in case there's a nice comfy rock that some of you live under, Masterpiece was banned for tournament play on the May 2018 Forbidden and Limited list, along with other true Draco cards moving up in quantities playable, like Dynamite Knight going from banned to limited, and Ignis Heat going from limited to unlimited entirely. So, the true Draco deck itself has lost its biggest poster child boss monster and its default main win condition, Although Metaltron 12 does technically exist, but we don't talk about him much because he's, um, well, not good? Like, at all? <laughs> but anyway, the true Draco deck lost its poster child win condition, but has regained some of its best resources for playback that are definitely not to be scoffed at by any means. The single copy of Dynamite Knight and the two extra copies of Ignis Heat truly make a world of difference in how this deck can proceed with plays, using its spells and traps, which are essential tools in allowing this deck to function as a stun deck without Masterpiece in the picture. Funny thing is, this topic and my thoughts around it aren't even really new to my channel at all. In fact, almost exactly 10 months ago to the day, on July 19th, 2017, I posted a video titled Why Masterpiece Should Be Banned in the TCG, and in that video I mildly discussed the merits the true Draco deck has built into it through its very well-balanced single tribute monsters that could allow it to function as a stun deck, and with very solid removal and resource engines built into its spells and traps, even without Masterpiece being in the game. Now, obviously a lot can change in 10 months, unless we're talking about my uploading tendencies, which will forever remain awful and inconsistent, and I cannot fix them, and I am sorry, sad face. But so it would be justifiable to think that the game has moved past true Draco being good. Meanwhile, this is very much not the case. In fact, Draco has been arguably more successful in the last three months than it ever was in 2017. And while yes, Masterpiece did play a big factor in that, Overall, the factors that supported the success are not solely attributable to Masterpiece, but rather overall the deck list is built around him. Card of Demise is still at 3 for some reason, I don't know, I guess drawing 3 for actually no reason or work isn't unfair in Konami's eyes, and the deck still has access to all of its diagrams and terraformings, as well as Pot of Dualities and Desires to further boost the consistency ceiling. The deck actually got more consistent with the extra copies of Ignis and Dynamite that it can now play, so while Masterpiece is no longer the big go-to muscle man of the deck, True Draco can still instead just access more cards to establish the boards for a more consistent and wider variety of play. If I had to put my finger on what the biggest boost to play is, it would definitely have to be Dynamite Knight giving near constant and unending access to True King's Return to constantly revive simple beaters as attacking threats and as tribute fodder. In my testing under the new format, there's almost never a turn that goes by where you don't have access to return face-up on your field to use. This is simply because of Dynamite Knight accessing it for free from your deck constantly, and Draco Phoenix constantly recycling both it or Dynamite should either go to grave. Being able to constantly summon reasonably large monsters turn after turn and attack with them is pure, plain, and simple Yu-Gi-Oh, and damn can it be effective. So what about Disruption? Is the deck good at disrupting plays and or breaking boards without just sticking Masterpiece? Yes, it's very much so, in fact. As I touched on in my 10 month old ban Masterpiece video, the true Draco theme of using traps to summon an Ignis Heat, Dynamite Knight, or Majesty Maiden during your opponent's turn to then pop a monster or spell or trap based off what you tributed is a very well balanced engine in itself that can yield strong results. Especially when you consider the monster you summoned is now going to trigger off the next effect activation your opponent performs, and again give you more resources to work with. It's simple incremental advantage and disruption in an engine that turn after turn can just further force your opponent into a simplified game state while you maintain and grow a field full of beaters. It shouldn't need to be said, but this obviously pairs very well with Floodgates on a competitive level. Whether that Floodgate is the Monarchs Erupt, Rivalry of Warlords, Skill Drain, etc., it is going to pair very well with any one form of play disruption that you have access to, to further make the game harder for your opponent and easier for you. And considering I previously touched on the deck still having full access to playsets of Duality, Card of Demise, and Desires, it should be fairly easy to pair a Floodgate with your regular plays, especially now that all those plays you're making are more consistent. And of course, we couldn't talk about Draco without including our favorite little Rocky boy, 
This card was and still is a perfect little bundle of concentrated terrorism, ready to make its way into the deepest part of your dreams and turn them into unending nightmares. Amano Iwato is still a fantastic card for playing into established boards going second, preventing yourself from getting hand trapped going first, and all other manners of activities as long as they consist of at least 90% pain and torment. Just like in the last format, you can summon a mono into a field of monster-based disruptions, and then establish a few tribute summons of your Dracos to selectively tear apart pieces of your opponent's field via the true Draco spell and trap effects, only to then bounce the Amano back to your hand to be safe and sound, while your Ignis, Majesty, or Dynamite are now live for play on your opponent's turn. Also, it can terrorize your opponent with the looming threat that is the Rocky Boy. Amano Iwato is a card that has been constantly discussed amongst players of whether or not Draco should have been hit or Amano should have been hit, but basically Amano Iwato is one of those cards that's actually just really balanced, just has a lot of actual abusable synergy with the true Draco deck because of how the deck tends to function, and that didn't go away with Masterpiece. The deck still has all of the things that are abusable with Amano Iwato accessible to your play structures. So all in all, the True Draco deck is still a very strong and very functioning deck with good forms of disruption, even without factoring in that you can just choose to run Metaltron 12. In the OCG during the 2017 Worlds format timeframe, it was a legitimate strategy to play Metaltron with no intention of ever actually tribute summoning it during your games. The intended play was to put it into the graveyard early on via either Demise discarding it or Diagram popping it or whatever, and just constantly reviving it with True King's Return every turn that it wasn't on the field. This generated a free monster with 3000 attack and 3000 defense, 3300 each if Diagram was on the field, that would require resources to be used to deal with it every single time it was summoned. So while Metaltron is definitely not amazing for its effect when Tribute summoned by any means, especially in comparison to Masterpiece, this is another angle the deck could approach for play because nothing forces simplified game states faster than an obscenely big beater that recurs every turn for free and requires actual cards to deal with every time. It's actually kind of wild. And while yes, summoning Metaltron 12 is in most cases pretty terrible because it requires three tributes and they all have to be different in order for it to gain full immunity, in certain matchups that is actually still just enough for you to actually just have an unbreakable monster for the matchup to deal with. Like, Metaltron 12 being tribute summoned on trap and monster effects is probably going to be actually just insane against Altergeists or against other stun decks like Paleo. It'd probably be really good against the Nightmare variants as well. Like, in certain situations, in certain aspects of play, Metaltron 12, if you're playing it as an option, is something that could actually come up to be tribute summoned in the more simplified game states that this de that this deck tries to force you into essentially like it's something that even though isn't it isn't ideal by a large stretch it's definitely something that is a possible play and is something that should be considered as such because even though it doesn't have built-in protection for itself like masterpiece did and requires one extra tribute it's one of those things that can still just end matches on its own because it is an immune monster and if you're actually dealing with opponent's resources through disruption methods and you're in a simplified game state, this card being tribute summoned could just be a game ender. So all in all, where does True Draco stand in the format and is it a viable option for play? I definitely think so. I believe that Draco is easily a top 10 deck of the format at bare minimum and could easily use the tools at its disposal as well as some possible new ones to maybe even crack top 5 status. I personally see this deck operating on the same basic level as Altergeists, since both are stun decks and their core function. Granted, both decks do function very differently as stun decks, but their respective strengths and weaknesses are pretty balanced between them. Altergeist doesn't really put a huge amount of pressure on the board with its monsters because of how small they are, but has access to better standalone trap cards and as a result, better standalone disruption cards. Whereas the Draco deck might as well just have pressure as part of its archetype name, the deck is incredibly good at pressuring fields with big monsters and the consistency to get to them, while the trade-off is that you have to play less of the good standalone trap cards, and most of your disruption comes from your engine cards that help generate pressure that are being combined with things like floodgates. I don't know, I could just be very wrong, but I think the true Draco is very well equipped to take on the new format without Masterpiece. The deck has everything it needs to function and function well, and the strategies that it has with already defined tournament winning strategies and cards have not gone away at all. 
But definitely let me know what you think in those comments down below. But that is where I'm going to end this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, as I've already said, check out the description for links to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Twitch page. And if you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon link is in the description as well. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support. And I'd like to give a huge shout out to my newest patron. Well, not newest, he was a patron before, but had to stop supporting, but he's recently started supporting again. Ringleader, it's glad to have you back. Glad to have you supporting the channel, and you are a huge part of what keeps this channel going, and I cannot thank you enough. But like I said, if you want to support the channel, Patreon link is in the description down below. But other than that, as always, guys, like the video if you enjoyed this kind of content. Subscribe if you're new here and already haven't, and you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.